الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله تعظيما لشعره وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الداعي إلى رضوانه صلى الله عليه وعلى أصحابه وعوانه وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد عباد الله Brothers and sisters in Islam Today we have witnessed two Eids the weekly Eid and the annual Eid the Eid of Adha and the Eid of Jumu'ah the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was reported to have relieved some villages who came to attain the Eid prayer in the morning. They would go back to their various villages to slaughter their animals, prepare the animals for consumption. He lived them of coming back to Medina city to perform Salat al Jumu'ah, which is the second Eid of the day, because the two Eids coincided on the same day, Friday, Eid al-Adha, Friday, Eid al Juma, the weekly Eid and the annual Eid. Alhamdulillah, in our own cases, we are comfortably living in our various homes in the metropolitan city of Yuna. Whether you are in Gire, Aigada, Jimeta, Yola Town, Mautic is your place of work. Some senior officers among you have been asked to come for work. The junior officers are asked to stay at home in order to prevent the spread of coronavirus, COVID-19. So here is your home. No problem concerning you. You should come for the two eats. You attended the first one, and you are now attending the second one. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did it. He attended the first one, and he attended equally the second one. Alhamdulillah, scholars are always trying their best, and Allah reward them, to enlighten us about our religion. No problem about that. The khutbah is taking a different dimension today. We are not talking about the Eid, the coinciding of the Eid and the Jumu'ah. We are not talking about that. Instead, we are talking about something different from this. Although Islam is a complete way of life of the Muslim, Wherever it is touched, it is part of you and it guides your life. My beloved brother, I want to put some questions before you. Think about the answers, whether here or after you leave. Have you ever isolated yourself and asked about your deeds? This is the first question. Have you ever isolated yourself to ask yourself about your needs? Have you ever done that? Have you ever attempted to count your sins the way you count your good deeds? We are fond of counting our good deeds. I help this, I help that, I fast, I pray the Nawab, I read the Quran, Alhamdulillah, I do this, I do that. I am fond of counting them. Do I count my sins the way I am fond of counting my good deeds? Have you ever thought about good deeds you are proud of? If you find it mixed up with ostentation, publicity, and some share of desire for fame, how would you endure in this situation? 
while your heart is filled up with unpleasant and dangerous things. This is what the Prophet Sallallahu told us. Hufatina bishahawat wa hufatil jannah bil makari. The way to al jannah is filled up with things that are unpleasant, unpleasant to one to, 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 to self. Unpleasant. You don't want to read the Quran. You don't want to try to memorize the Quran. You don't want to pray. You don't want to keep your mouth shut from backbiting. You don't want to keep your mouth shut from abusing people and so on and so forth. We are fond of engaging in these kind of things. They are filled up in the way to the Jahannam. Things that are enticing. You take pleasure in backbiting. You take pleasure in abusing. You take pleasure when you are idle. You always want to go to sleep. Once you open the Quran to read, the devil will be playing over your intelligence. Playing over your mind. You begin to slumber. But once you keep it aside, it goes. He doesn't want you to see, he doesn't want to see you engaging in acts of righteousness. But he helps you to go astray. And on the day of the judgment, when Allah is punishing people, he will come and exonerate himself. La talumuni walumu don't blame me. Did you see me when you were committing the sin? Did you see me? So stop blaming me. How are you ready to carry all these things and appear before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How would you approach your Lord while you are carrying sins? Allah the Almighty says, O oh, you who believe, fear Allah and keep your duty to him and let every person look to what he has sent forth for the tomorrow. And fear Allah. Verily Allah is all aware of what you do and be not like those who forgot Allah and he caused them to forget their own selves. Those are the merciful. Umar bin al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu was reported to have said, judge yourself before you are judged. Weigh yourself before you are weighed. Judge yourself today so that you get lighter judgment tomorrow. If you judge yourself, whenever you go to bed, think of what you have committed. From the appearance of the twilight up to the sunset, what have I committed? The sins. Have the sins outweighed the righteous works or vice versa? Which one? If the sins outweigh the righteous works, complete or make the righteous work overweigh the sins by engaging in easting fire in the night. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. It is only a conscious person, a sensible person, that always remembers what he has done in the day before he goes to bed. Maybe in a week, you hardly ask yourself, what have I committed in a week? Maybe you only ask yourself once in a week. Somebody is daily asking himself, is daily judging himself, what have I committed today? If he realizes that the sins outweigh the good ones, then he engages in a stick far until the good ones overweigh the sins. 
he who engages in this kind of thing is going to have a lighter judgment before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he has been preparing. He has been preparing. It's just like examination. There is no trick in it. Go and read when the examination approaches or whenever a lecturer enters a class, delivers his lecture, go over it, go over it again and again until you comprehend. So whenever there is a test, you will have no problem. Whenever there is an examination, you will have no problem because you have been reading what you have been told by your lecturer. But you find it difficult, sincerely speaking, when you prepare to read after the examination timetable is out, maybe just a week or three days to the examination, then you begin to read. You can't compare yourself to a person who has been reading right from the resumption, right from the beginning of the lectures. So always ask yourself, what have I done? What have I committed? This is the advice of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu. And he said, prepare for the greatest appearance. Greatest appearance, that is before Allah, for questioning. Allah says, that day shall you be proud to judgment. Yawma idhum tu'radun, la taqwa minkum khafiya. To Uradun, you would be brought before Allah for judgment. La taqwa minkum khafiya, and not a secret of you will be hidden. That's yawma tubula sarair, when all the secrets will be exposed. All the secrets will be exposed. Yawma tubula sarair. Then an infidel will begin to ask, Ma li hadha al-kitab? What's the matter with this book? La yugadu sagira wa la kabira illa ahsaha. It doesn't neglect something. No matter how minutest it is, it reflects it. Allah says, Whatever they did, they will find it, record it. Fear Allah, fear that day. You have some of your periods that you are alone. Only Allah sees you. Only the angels that records see what you are doing. But on that day, everything is going to be exposed. Allah says, Verily those who live in ill for fear of their Lord, are those who believe in the Ahya, are those who join not anyone that is as partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and those who give that their charity, or those who give that which they give, that is charity, with their hearts full of fear, full of fear, whether their arms and charities, etc., have been accepted or not, because they are sure to return to their Lord. It is these who raise for the good deeds, and they are foremost in them. Aisha, radiallahu anha, was reported to have said, I asked the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about this ayah, whereupon he said, No, the daughter of Siddiq, they are the ones who fast, who pray, who give charity, but they are afraid whether their righteous works are accepted. As he says, Ula'ika yusari'una fil khayrat. Sayyida Aisha was asking the noble Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam concerning this ayah, the people mentioned in the ayah. Are they those that were engaging in zina, engaging in wine taking, engaging in all acts of disobedience and disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, no, no, the daughter of Siddiq, 
The ayah is referring to those people who pray, who fast, who give out charity. But yet, they are not certain whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts that as an act of ibadah from them. Doing an, an act of ibadah is one thing. Accepting it is another thing. There may be some things that may make an act of ibadah not to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his servant. Ostentation, that is a real. If you do something for publicity, you do something for the sake of people, even if you do it 50-50, 50 for the sake of Allah, 50 for the sake of people, Allah will not accept. You give out 20,000 to assist somebody. Say, okay, 10,000, I do it for the sake of Allah. The other 10,000, let people see and commend me. It is rejected. The Prophet is reported to have said that Allah is saying in Hadith and Policy, Ana shuraka an I am contented with what Ashuraka, people that are doing Riyah are doing. I don't like their work. Man amila amalan ashuraka ma'i fihi ghayri taraktuhu wa shifu. Whoever does an act of ibadah, which I suppose to see, which should be done for my own sake, which should be done sincerely, but he has done it so that people will commend him. Allah says, I don't like that act. It is rejected. It is not accepted. You may find people praying so that they will be commended. No and void. You may find people reading the Quran so that they may be commended. No and void. You may find people helping others with their own wealth. To be commended, null and void. It's not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have to be very careful. They fast, they give out charity, they pray, they read the Quran, but they are afraid whether the work is accepted. That's why it is reported from among the past scholars, pious people, who were saying that if they knew. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted an act of ibadah from them, they would have been very happy. Because Allah says, Allah accepts an act of ibadah only from those that have taqwa. So they are happy. Don't allow your righteous words to deceive you. To reach to a point and say, oh, claim that you are people of God, you are men of Allah, you are better than this, you are better than that, you are better than those people before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't deceive yourself. My brother in Islam, this is the behavior of the past pious people. They used to do the righteous work so that they would come closer to Allah. They used to compete in the doing of righteous work. They used to judge themselves. They were afraid whether their works were accepted. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu used to shed tears profusely and say, that is commanding people, cry, cry. If you cannot, that is if you cannot cry, pretend cry. That is intent to cry, even if you cannot cry. You know, naturally, some people can, they can hardly cry. They hardly cry. There are some people that are easily crying. Easily. They can easily shed tears. Others are hard to cry. So say, now we're going to say that cry. Cry. If you can't, pretend crying. He said, I take off by Allah. I take off by Allah. I wish I were this tree, the fruit of which is eaten 
for nourishment. He pointed at a tree and said, I wish I were this tree, the fruit of which is eaten for nourishment. This is Umar bin al-Khattab. One day he read Surah Al-Tur until he reached Allah's saying, which is the Allah saying. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Tur, commending those people who are lying on their sides or who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Sayyidina Umar cried until he became sick and people went to greet him. Because of that ayah. He used to come across an ayah that frightened him in his nocturnal prayers. They used to wake up in the night to pray at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whenever he would come across an ayah that frightened him, he would stay for days at home until people went to greet him, thinking he was sick because of an ayah, the message in an ayah. There would be two black lines on his face where tears ran. If they look at his face, they will see two black lines where tears were shedding. Abdullah ibn Abbas told him one day, O oh Omar, Allah made you to build provinces, to build towns, and Allah paid way for many conquests, paved way for many conquests under you. But he said, I wish I would cross without you. Or sin. This is what Sayyidina Umar was telling Abdullah ibn Umar. Abdullah ibn Umar was trying to encourage him, look at your works, O Sayyidina Umar. You have everything to present before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that he will be merciful to you. Don't mind, don't get afraid. You establish towns like Kufa, Basra, all these towns were established by Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu. They became centers of learning. Muslims dominated the place. Up to this time, these areas are controlled by Muslims. And he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala paved ways for conquests under you. You conquered this, you conquered that, you conquered that area, brought them under the border. He was trying to encourage him. But do you know what Sayyidina Umar told him? Upon all this, if on the day of the judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will set me free because of the leadership, without giving me any reward and without any sin, I am okay. No sin, no reward, I am okay. This is what Sayyidina Umar is saying. This will tell you the dangers that are there in leadership. The dangers associated with what? Leadership. Omar radiallahu anhu is saying that if I will appear before Allah, no sin, no reward for the period I led people as the Khalifa. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uthman bin Affan radiallahu anhu used to stand by the grave and cry until his beard got wet. He said, I wish I were between the garden and the hellfire. I do not know where would I be tackled. I would have chosen to be ash, to be ash. I would, have been, I would have chosen to be ash before my fat, before my abode is determined. That is, he would have loved to be in between the Jannah and Annah before his final abode is determined. He would have loved to be the ash. 
Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiyallahu anhu, used to be a frequent cry, frequent cry, and was afraid of his Lord. He was more afraid of two things, he said. I am afraid of prolonged hope and following personal intention. These are the two things that say now, or oh, uh, Ali radiallahu anhu was afraid of must prolonged hope al amal al tamanni and what personal interest because they are killers he said prolonged hopes make you to forget an akhir prolonged hope make you to forget an akhir while following personal interest prevents you from following the truth. He spoke the truth. If you have a prolonged interest or prolonged hope, maybe you were told or you have heard sometimes that uh, among the politicians, you may find them planning how to share the leadership among, leadership among themselves. Leadership of a state leadership of the country. So, okay, we will allow you to run for the eight years. After you, I am coming. It is an arrangement. Do you agree? Yes. Let's put it on paper. They do that. He doesn't know that maybe he will not reach the first year. He will go to the first year. They plan. That's why it is said jokingly. A Sokoto man was asked, where are you going to stay? How do you plan your life? He said, I will go to Port Harcourt, spend 10 years. I will come back to Kaduna, spend seven years. I will go to... He continued to mention towns where he will stay. Then somebody asked him, oh my brother, have you forgot about death? He said, oh. Forget about it. I'm not looking for it. Therefore, it will not prevent me from planning my life. Wherever I am, if it likes catching me, let go. Let it go there and meet me. But it will never prevent me from planning my life. That's what he said. So prolonged hope definitely makes somebody to forget about a lot. It is typical, particularly if you are vying for a seat of leadership. And the personal interest always keeps you away from telling the truth and even loving the truth. If you have an interest, it must collide with the truth. You cannot accept it. So Sayyid Ali is saying that I am afraid of these two things most my brothers and sisters, the essence of this reminder is to get ourselves prepared. Get ourselves prepared for something that is unpleasant to me, to you, and to all of us. You don't like it, but it must come. I don't like it, it must meet me. Death is inevitable. It must come. Without notice. Does it give you notice? It doesn't. Maybe if somebody is sick, we say there is a sign of death in him. But you are healthy. I'm healthy. But I hardly bring death close to my door. Close to the door of my car. Or close to my pocket. I hardly do that. You hardly do it. Why? Because you are healthy. You are counting some years to come. Maybe 10, 20, 30, 40, as the case may be. <clears throat> while you are alive, while you are healthy, you begin to judge yourself daily. Wherever you find that there is problem, you still have time.
continue to say istighfar, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. You have the chance now. It is now or never. You have the chance because you are alive. If you are dead, no chance for you. No chance for me. All your certificates, you are going to leave them here. All the firm is left here. You appear to us today single, alone, the way we created you. You come to this, you came to this world through your mother. I came to this world through my mother. When I am going, I will go alone. I will be buried alone. Unless when there is disaster natural or human, where people are buried in one grave, which they call mass grave. Normally, ideally, I go alone, you go alone. You are going to face your questions. I am going to face my questions. Mine is to tell you, mine is to remind you, yours is to remind me, yours is to tell me. When we go, everyone takes his own course. So fear Allah, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are committing sins on daily basis, forgiveness. Yet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful to us. If he were to apply the principle of tit for tat, nothing would have been left on this earth. If Allah were to catch people for all that they did, no one is going to remain on this earth. Nobody. You are a sinner, I am a sinner. We are all sinners. So still Allah is merciful. But it is time. It is time to hacker. It is time to reason. It is time to come back to your senses. Allah doesn't speak to you directly into your ears. He speaks to you through his representative. They are the scholars and students who tell you this, who tell you that on daily basis. The preaching, the nasiha that you listen to, Allah speak to you through this channel. But on the day of the judgment, before he punishes, he is going to use the angels to ask you or to ask the kuffar. As he says in the glorious Quran, وَسِيكَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَى جَهَنَّمَ ذُمَرًا سِيكَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَى جَهَنَّمَ ذُمَرًا The infidels are going to be taken, are going to be ushered into the Jahannam. Zumara in groups. Hatta idha jau, hatta idha jau ha, futi hat abwab. When they come closer to the Jahannam, then all the gates are open. Wa qala lahum khazanatuha. Those that are guarding the hellfire will ask them, Alam ya atikum rusulun minkum? Did messengers, didn't messengers among you come to you? Yatluna alaykum ayati rabbikum. They read to you the ayats of your Lord. Wa yumdhirunakum and they warned you. Lika ayawmikum hadha. They warned you against meeting of this day. Qalu bala. They said yes. They came, they preached, we didn't listen. Then the angel will say, Udukulu abuwaba jahannam khalidina fiha fabiti samak wal mutakir. You are lucky to find somebody to remind you. I am lucky to find somebody to remind you. We are lucky to find people to remind us of something that is imminent of something that is inevitable, it must come. So let us be careful. 
come back to our senses. Allahumma ajina fi man hadayt, wa afina fi man aqayt, wa tawallina fi man tawallayt, wa barik lana fi ma aqayt, wa qina wa sirif alana shakra ma qadayt, wa inna ka taqadi wa la yudu ma alayka, inna ku la yadillu ma walayt, wa la yadillu ma alayt, tabarak tarabbana wa ta'alayt, la malja wa la manja minka illa ilayk, wa qumu ila salatikum wa 